Welcome to the second episode of the Jack's Wax Podcast. My name is Jared Miner. I am here with Todd Isaac and my dad, Jack Miner. Jack Attack. Well, the first podcast was cool, and we had a lot of good feedback. And thanks, everybody, for the feedback. It was awesome. Yeah, you know, we appreciate that. We were really glad to get the story out there. I know Jack had a lot of people that, there's a lot of people right here in Columbus that never even really knew the whole story and how it started. And a well, because most of my friends are still in prison. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people that knew you, I mean, that that have seen it and don't realize how you know how it got there and how you did start. Right. I get that question a lot. How Jack started so it was it was really cool to yeah. get all the feedback from everybody we, had, we did have nice, nice comments and some and some cool stuff about that so that was cool and and in thinking about what we wanted to do for this second episode we just thought you know it was todd's idea what do we why don't we talk about some of the basic tips on detailing washing uh just stuff that you know you can't really expect people to know yeah and we had we had some people that uh reached out to us and said you know i think a cool podcast would be just different tips that you know some things that we may take for granted when it comes to detailing right. we've, we've been doing, doing it for so long but right. you know just different tips and tricks that you could uh do um you know in the everyday detailer from the guy that's just your do it yourself do it yourself at home guy or um you know professional detailers because we get tips from them a lot i heard you talk uh to someone in the store this morning i was in the back and they said hey do people that like just regular people buy your stuff yeah, yeah there's yeah, a guy he's, heard, he's, he's funny, did, but yeah he was like he was like so is is there anybody that just a uh, regular car comes in here and, and there is i mean and there's yeah. a lot of people that are just that are just get people that want to use good detail products on their regular car at home that's what's cool we sell to the guy that's just washing his car in his driveway to the guy that's been detailing his whole life yeah his career that being said the regular guy or whatever you want to call him is getting the professional stuff that's that's yeah. the cool part and that's almost how it all started i mean the regular yeah. guy started wanting the professional stuff and, it, and exactly. it's what got into the day right. one of the uh one of the most common questions that we get at a car show here is how do we keep swirls out of the paint and most of the swirls that you see are imperfection, spider webs. There's all kinds of different terms for it. When you look at that paint, especially on dark colored cars, yes. black and dark reds and blues and so on and so forth, you get dizzy at some of them when you look at them. Yeah, you like know, my car it, right now. <laughs> right. We'll get ready to do a video on We'll We'll fix yeah. that for you. Um, a lot of that is self-inflicted. We're using the, the major. I would say the majority yeah. of it's self-inflicted. Yeah. And, you know, and people aren't trying to do it. They just may be using the improper tools, uh, the wrong kind of wash mitts, the wrong towels. Microfiber is, in my opinion, one of the most important detailing tools you can have. Right. Because you're, it's something that you're using to touch your car all the time. And if you've got the wrong one, it's not good. That's right. And theoretically, anytime you're touching your car, you're putting some kind of scratch and swirl. Yeah. So the only thing we, the only thing we do as a professional detail company is we try to minimize as much scratches as, as much as possible, whether it's good layer of wax protection or it is using premium microfiber wash mitts instead of your old lamb wa lamb wool wash mitt yeah and um, putting things like grit guard in the bottom of the bucket people that don't know we have one sitting here if you're not watching but grit guard um company out of here local bell fountain ohio, bell fountain, ohio. Yeah. great people that's um, something we should you know for the people that are just listening to this on on uh you know while they're driving down the street in their car they're listening to it on their phone I like the YouTube version personally. You know what I mean? Because you can, because we're kind of highlighting products and stuff. If yeah. you get a chance, uh, I know everybody's busy, but if you get a chance to watch a YouTube version, uh, yeah. And we're going to try, we're going to try to put it out on Facebook too. So if you check out our Facebook page, it should be out there. Um, you can kind of see we got some products sitting here on the table, but yeah. Um, you know, Grit Guards is a good one. It's a, and it's to us, we've been using it, and it seems like common sense. But there's a lot of people at car shows and every everywhere we go that still don't know about them. So you put that in the bottom of your bucket. And what it does is when you're uh, put your wash mitt in the bucket and rinse it out, it takes all the dirt, puts it below that grit guard. It won't allow it to come back up and get in your wash mitt. So then you're not putting the same dirt back on your car and introducing swirls. Scratches. Exactly right. So if you just start in the washing process, which all of us love to do that, you get a bucket. Mm -hmm. you know, so many people just Google two bucket wash method. A lot of people are familiar with that. Yep. You have a bucket. And you've got your grit guard in the bottom. It's a ten dollar piece of equipment that is a lifesaver. Oh man, it's gonna it's it um 
it's going to save you a lot when it when you start talking about swirl scratches stuff like that. Uh, for the people that are only listening to this on audio, what we're talking about is this grate uh, that goes in the bottom of the bucket, and it's like a screen. So the dirt goes in the water below it, and when the wash mitt comes back down in, you don't reintroduce the dirt back onto your car. Yeah, you're right. rubbing that wash mitt on that grit guard to, to loosen up the dirt. It goes below it, and it can't come back up. Yeah, like really you just said, you don't want to reintroduce it. Mm-hmm. Right, and, and it's only, simple, but it works. Yeah. Like Jerry, it's only ten bucks. It's like it's gonna it's gonna be the most uh, the least expensive thing you can buy yep. to uh, to help with not uh, introducing swirls. So then you you got stuff like that. You got premium microfibers. You know, back we we were talking about earlier. You know, back in the day when microfibers first came out. Oh, the first one I saw was the Ohio State Fair, big uh, fair here, Columbus, Ohio. It was probably twenty years ago. It was thirty dollars for one <laughs> for one towel, and one it's towel. not nearly the towel that we're talking about oh, today. They, it, uh, they really uh, just come a long way, and we have. It's not the one that you buy at the big box store. Yeah, the ones we saw are the good ones. We're going to have a, a whole podcast on microfiber towels because they're that important. You know, we're not going to get break down every single one today, but I, you just can't stress enough. Right. All, all, all towels are not created equal. Correct. They are not, and that's that's what is. Those are the main things in taking and in, in minimizing scratches, swirls. For sure. As to, um, you know, use proper towels, wash mitts, um, good soaps, wax, add protection. Just keep putting protection uh, on your car. To, Again, it's to always about the preparation. And the number one thing is stay away from the automatic brush car washes. Yeah, those I mean, are, if you're trying to keep your paint really, really good, you know, the, those they're a lot better than they used to be. That's for sure. The soft touch, I mean, they're, we're not trying to trash the automatic tunnel car wash industry they do a good job but i can tell you back a a while ago 25 years ago those those car washers were like weed eater strings i mean (laughs) yeah like super hard they've come a long way but man i'll tell you the problem is you've got let's say a guy that's got a big truck he's got mud all over it that just went in it before you and all that mud and all that crap is would you take a muddy wash mitt and wash your car right you wouldn't so but if that's if that's your if that's your thing, you know, just know that you're going to get some swirls that's and scratches, all. and that's where right. they're coming from. A lot of them come yep. from that. Sure. So those, we see it all the time. That's one of the questions. That's one of the questions we get. So minimizing swirls. We we also have products that if you're trying to remove swirls and scratches, swirl remover, um, you can apply it. That's all. Also, probably a whole other episode paint talking correction. about paint correction and stuff. But sure. there's products that are for it um, to remove it, but to prevent them, keep a good layer of protection on there is a, is a really good a tip. No doubt about it. Um, Another question we get a lot is about tire dressings, tips, um, when sling. it comes to sling, I get sling all the and side of my paint? Can I, should I use my tire dressing? Can I use it on, you know, the plastic trims, stuff like that? You know, a good tip for using tire dressing, super blue is our solvent-based tire dressing. A good tip is always to spray it in the applicator, not just spray it directly on the tire. Well, what people will do is they'll wash their car and they dry it off and then they take tire dressing and they just spray it on the tire. Well, now you've got that. You're doing it outside, most of us. And and uh, even if you're doing it inside, it still carries. It's all still, in it still the air. Around. A little bit of a breeze. So it's all down the side of your car. You get that overspray. Now it's just all over the car you just sure. washed. Right. And and after that solvent base, it, it like spreads mm-hmm. more and more. So that little spot becomes bigger and bigger and over I, the next couple of days. And it'll wipe off. It's not like it's, you know, earth shattering. But right. it's just a step you don't need to take. Exactly. Yeah. So and you'll actually use less product. Yeah, spray it in an applicator mm-hmm. and apply it straight to the tire. And, you know, one thing that a lot of people don't even do, you know, they just they don't know to do is so many of these cars have black plastic wheel wells. And Super Blue is awesome Oh man, for shooting up in there, or putting it on with an applicator, and to darken that down. Great uh, for that. Really you can actually natural. spray it up in there because it's controlled. The wind doesn't catch it. Yeah. And the other thing is when you, I mean, it sounds simple, but it's worth mentioning is put it on with the, the tire the applicator do all four then move your car forward you know eight or ten inches and get that spot on the bottom that you can never get yep yeah the part that's on the yeah. pavement yeah, yeah definitely those are those are good little tips that you know for your do so for the ways to ways to um make sure you get the whole tire there's there's some professional detailers that know all those tricks but oh there's, definitely there's there's the weekend warrior type guy that maybe not doesn't know that that's and, right and you know that's something that, that uh seems easy to us just Maybe not to do it forever. Well, and the other right. thing is, if you're spraying it on, say you got an asphalt, a blacktop driveway, you're spraying it all four of those spots where you've sprayed 
that overspray gets on your blacktop. And it's on and it's there. So, it's solvent-based, and it's so water-repellent, it could rain for the next month, and you're going to see those four spots on your Definitely. driveway. It kind of looks we, crappy. Yeah. You might not want to do that. Right. Yeah. It's, that's a good point because that is, that is something that happens. You spray it, you get yeah. that little spot on there. Yeah. You see it at dealerships that we go to still. Oh, I used to tell Jared when he first started driving his car, I said, do not, you could pull the car in the garage, dress the tires, don't do it don't out do it on, the, on the asphalt. Right. Yeah, it right. leaves, leaves spots, and that, that solvent-based product. And that's another thing. Uh, People always they say, "Can I use Super Blue on my trim?" Well, you can, but it's not be- It's not the best. It's going to provide shine. That's why some of these products that are out there, you know, at your retail or you know, uh, auto parts stores, mm-hmm. it's that's the step we take. Is we want to you don't you don't want to use solvent based products to spray on your motor or plastic because if it rains, that solvent's coming down your paint and it's turning like rainbowy colors. It's yeah. just not safe and yeah. not the best. So you would want to use a water based product for that in simple terms because you know you could lose people when you say solvent based water based what's that mean solvent based uh tire dressings you know are water resistant so when it's on the tire and it rains it won't just wash right off water based dressings for the most part when it does rain they're going to dull down quite a bit or some of them even completely wash off so right. there are some really good water based dressings our tire and trim gel is really thick um for a water based product it's it's pretty water repellent i mean for for in that category of products it's pretty damn good yeah. And it's very high shine. So if you like a high shine, tire trim gel is awesome. And, and, that, and, and that's for the trim, like you're mentioning. Right. You know, and that's why base. we came out with it, mm-hmm. because we wanted it to be something that was great f- and safe yep. for trim. It's not always about just getting the best shine. Super Blue is going to give you a better shine, but it's not. It's well, not the so best product. It's the carrier. Use. So if you got a water-based product, water-based, you have the water and the emulsion that we do. The water is the carrier, and the solvent base, it's a solvent, you know, that's mixed in with the silicones. Right. And uh, yeah. the amino, fun- uh, amino functional silicones, the ones that really last, are water based. And we got to do an emulsion on that to make that work. But there's some that are really good. Yeah. I love Tire and Trim Joe personally. You yeah. Me I, too. I would say, from an application standpoint, if people are out there using it or haven't tried it yet, thinner is better. You don't need to just cake it all over that yeah. tire because it builds up. And then now you've built it up in the tread block. That's right. pretty much sling. true of all of our products. And less if, is more. If yeah. anyone ever tells you they have a tire, uh, a tire dressing. dressing that doesn't sling, they're lying to you. Well, if it's because it's gravity. You got to let it dry. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what it comes down to. There's nothing out that you're just going to spray on it and leave immediately, and it's perfect. No, it's it going to sling, sling less. There could, there's some that sling less, definitely. But it's what it is. I get you that. Let it dry. I get that question a lot. You they know, all do. It. Ours there. doesn't. They, do you have no matter where you buy it, it's going to do it. Yeah. Do you have one that doesn't sling? And I always, you know, it depends. It's how you do it for sure. If you remember the old hexane base one we did, mm-hmm. that was super shiny. And sling, it would be on the car behind you, going down the freeway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it, you know, it was a crazy high shine. Some people like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I prefer a more natural look. That's why I like Super Blue personally. That's Super the Blue best. is the one. That's that's the workhorse. Yeah, that's I mean, the good we're, one. We're selling it, that the most for sure. And people that don't know, it gives a good like satin shine, almost like brand new look of that tire. It's it's what you need. It's that you know. In the previous podcast, we talked about you don't need twenty dressings. We have one. Mm-hmm. One solvent base, yeah, that's, that's right. It. One that's water all base, you need. One solvent if, base. If you want a solvent base dressing, we've got it. That's all you need. That's right. Yeah. And, and for people that like a higher shine, because not everybody just likes a good satin shine. If you like a high shine, go with tire and trim gel. And go. we've actually been messing with a water base, real high shine. We can do that. Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. been messing with one that 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 could oh, potentially well, exactly. be. Definitely, I, I know exactly how to do it. We can do it, and if there's a demand for that, mm-hmm. that's what you want. We'll do it. Yeah. Give us feedback on that. That's right. Sure. Give us feedback. If you like a real high shine, let us know. Um, we, could probably, we could probably touch uh, briefly on the trim thing. You know, if you've got uh, if you've got trim, I had a phone call this morning from a guy that said, hey, I got bought a brand new car, and I want to protect the trim. We have a product called Trim Shield. It's a coating, mm-hmm. right, ceramic coating for trim. And if your trim's already perfect and you want to protect it from fading, that's the answer. Right. That's so the many, highest form of protection. That's the highest form of protection. It'll be just like it does on your paint as far as ceramic coating. A lot of people don't get ahead of it that fast, and their trim starts to fade. Well, if your trim's not real bad, the tire and trim gel is going to work great, just like you're saying, water-based dressing, and mm-hmm. it's going to make it shine, and it's going it's not going to run down the, the panel and look like right. crap. Right. Now, if you've got one of these Jeeps or these avalanches or one of these vehicles that has the fa- the trim is just faded like crazy. You know, oh, it's get, almost white. Yeah, it gets really bad. That's when you get into black trim renew which is a restorative product. It's got black dye in it. It's actually restoring it. Yes. It's not just yes. uh, shining it. Um, no, it's turning it black. It is. And it works great. It does work really good. Really good so product. 
you know, it depends on wh- where your trim's at. You know, we, we saw a ton of that trim renewed because people, uh, you know how these old cars are, these old uh Remember what was the vehicle that you did when we first started messing oh, around? Oh with man, the, and it's on the car lot. Yeah, we were uh, we were we were just had got what we thought maybe was the the right formula. So I was a like, man, I'm, gonna, purple I'm we going were out, on. and I told Jared, I said, I'm going to find the, I'm going to try to find the worst vehicle I can possibly you found find. It. Just uh, man, and this it's one was Dodge or something. It was old Dodge yeah. truck. Yeah, um, it was bad, and it was like white. That's on I mean, our Instagram. It's on it? our Instagram. Yeah, one of one of the pictures. Yeah, but it's uh, I mean, it was almost white. So. We were we were like, well, this is be a good test. We didn't know what it would do, and it literally turned that thing like you it was brand a new. Before you posted, and I said, "Damn, dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. that, how many coats you put on that? Yeah, they can make that you know, it, car look that good. It, it honestly looked like it had been painted. Yeah, it, well, that's it, where we took tape, taped you taped yep, it off, taped did, it off, and pulled the tape off. And even the guy at the dealership that was uh, that details there, mm-hmm. good uh, good guy that we that we know there. He uh, was out there with me, and he was like, "Oh my God!" He's like, "I want a bottle." Yeah. And so what's well, good for these some of these used car trade ins that these car dealers get that the rest of the you know they've they've done a paint correction on the paint looks awesome, yeah. the interior is cool, and then you got this trim looks horrible. And, and a lot you of can th- put dress on it, never looks as good. It's faded out. It's the ultraviolet right. sun rays have turned it almost gray, almost white. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we can make it black. We can make it look brand new. As good that's as it's going to get with that product, that's for sure. Yeah. I shouldn't say we. You really? can just order that product. We're half the price of our competitors on that product. Really, when good. you start comparing it. Now, let yeah. me back up. The first question was that guy called you today. This morning, a guy had said uh, he called the shop, and I just happened to be in there, and I answered it, and he said, uh, "Hey, what do you have for you know? I, I know you have these like trim products, but my trim's not bad. Right. My, my trim's not faded. What do you have for it?" And I said, "Well, I got that's the answer it. for you. It's it's but my point. I was going to make was." The difference between that guy and me, yeah, is he called and you answered. <laughs> yeah, so right, he yeah. he's not. Well, he's see, that's what I'm doing is uh, I mean I'm talking to customers all day. <laughs> yeah, you're napping, <laughs> and when you wake up from your nap, I got here for the podcast. What it's you almost eight it. o'clock at night. <laughs> you made hell? it. Good job. I appreciate <laughs> you. Getting here. You've been here three hours. Um, but yeah, that in in another question, a little tip. And I think we touched on it last podcast when it comes to trim is, you know, when you're waxing and you get wax over on the black trim and it wants to to stay on there and get it on there all the time. Personally, I've never done it. (laughs) Right. And it's really, it's because I have people wax my car. (laughs) You're not waxing. Is your wife waxing your car? She's good. I'll tell you what, when I first started. She does keep her car pretty clean. I'll give it to her. I'm telling you. Well, she's got it. She's got an image to uphold. You can't be rolling around Jack's, Jack's wax wife with a dirty ride. No, can't happen. There you go. Can't do that. She is. uh, She keeps it clean, dude. She really does. It really is nice. It's a, it's Maybe sit down and watch her. Maybe you learn something. I wonder if she'd clean mine. No. I think that'd be nice out. Nobody's done that. Um, but you, if you get wax over on the trim, you take one of uh, just a magic eraser from any any store. We sell them, but you can get them anywhere. Yeah, everyone um, knows what a magic eraser is. Take a magic so eraser, wet it a little bit, and it will literally take that wax right off the black yeah. trim. So it's, that's instead it. of restoring, you know, yeah. instead of putting some kind of protective product like a trim gel or a water-based dressing on top of that to try you to You just start chasing, that. you're chasing your problem. Yeah. Now. Oh, man. It. You need to clean it first. You got to get it off, and yeah. that will take it literally right out. Yep. We always tell people, um, there, I'm, I'm like, I can sell you something to get it off, but the best thing is magic eraser. Well, that's the thing about these podcasts. We want to let people know we don't have to sell you something. We're just give you tips. Yeah, that's, that's what this deal. one's about. It's about tips. Yep. It's another, it brings you to the next question is and one that we get weekly is tree sap. What's the best way to remove tree sap? We could come out with a product and say this is tree sap remover, but it's the best thing to remove tree alcohol. sap. Yeah. Isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol. You could get that at your grocery store, your local drugs, CVS, yep. Walgreens. You know, some tree sap is, is harder to remove than others, for sure. You may you have to use a plastic razor blade or yeah. you know some kind of tool with it, but isopropyl alcohol will definitely loosen it up. Sure. Most of the tree sap you get, um, isopropyl alcohol is going to be the ticket yep. to get it right off there. Um, we sell it to dealers. Yeah. You know, just because, yeah, I mean, obviously these cars are sitting on these lots and there's trees. And oh, yeah. Well, we actually have on. it in bulk because we use it in liquid glass cleaners. So, yeah. 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 yeah and it's a... Uh, it really people were like, "Oh my God, I can't believe you told me that." It's and they never knew. Yeah, you know something we we've known for a long time. You and, don't and know you what just, you don't know. That's right. And it's well, uh, it was a customer that told us about the Mister Clean thing. It was a detailer. Yeah, you know we learn a ton from our detailer sure. uh, customers. The feedback we get. Yes, they're doing this day in and day out. Right, and they're the best. Uh, that's right. So. There's all kinds of all kinds of stuff that we learn from them. Um, that we learn. Is that a race car outside? Somebody's racing outside. The <laughs> people that don't know this, this is a drag strip right out here. Well, when I was a kid, I'm talking when I was 20 years old, we 
had a quarter mile marked off here by the airport. We used to drag race here. Well, that was before they built that new airport, that yeah. tower. And it they was could a while see everything. Ago. Right. It, it Were did. you guys racing horses? <laughs> or <laughs> these guys <Was> never horse, <laughs> horse power. These like, guys was, never give me a break. <laughs> was, it, was it? They used yeah. to have a horse strip. <laughs> right. It was how? What kind of horsepower you got? One. Yeah, yeah I got two, one I got, horse. I got one horse or two horsepower. That's <laughs> right. cool. Yeah. Some of my buddies had two horsepower. They had a little bit more money. <laughs> yeah. Well, I rode that horse to the bank, and I did all right. <laughs> That's did, right. We did have it out there, though. It was Oh, yeah. We used to drag, oh, drag race right here. Yeah. Motorcycles and cars. Had motorcycle uh, guys come out here, motorcycle groups, gangs. Gangs would come out here, you know, and had that kind of, you know. Oh, it was yeah. Cool. It was cool. It, it, it was, yeah. It was pretty we've badass. Been, we've had some... We appreciate everybody that sent in the questions. We made a little post. Everybody uh, sent in some questions. We're going to answer some of them. And, and when we post, uh, once this podcast is out there and you guys are listening now, if you got some more questions, tips, uh, tips that you guys know, uh, drop them in comments. Um, yeah. Let everybody know the tips that you're using. Um, we would, we, we'd love to help if we can. Yep. Anything that we've learned over no, the years. We're always we learning. Pass it along. Yeah. yeah, and if there's any questions you got, just, just drop it in comments. There's a ton uh, of uh, product application stuff that our our customers have taught us you know that's not a certain product is not even used for that but they found out that it was really really cool or really good so that's pretty yeah. cool if i have to if i had to touch on one more thing that is uh that's been it's kind of a pain when you're going into cleaning your car is the glass that's a lot of glass is least we should probably pain. do it last yeah i mean yeah so absolutely yeah. In, the, in the last part of your detail you tackle the yeah, glass that's i mean that's the way i do it so the yeah. thing about glass is, you know, you can have the best glass cleaner in the world, and if you got a crappy towel, that you're doing it with a dirty towel, that's right. soiled with something else. You just cleaned your interior with it, and now you're going to try to clean your glass. Ninety percent of the problem. It's not the glass cleaner. It's the yeah. uh, it's the what you're using. And and we've got a glass cleaner. It's awesome. And that coupled with a glass specific towel is great. great. And one of the first things I learned when I was detailing cars uh, was just a little tip when you're when you're cleaning the glass, you go east to west on the inside mm -hmm. and then on the outside go north to south and then if you have a streak and it's running east to west you know it's on the inside of the glass and you're not chasing you're that not, streak going right. in and out yeah. in you and don't out. know where it's at and you know if it's it, it was always a good little tip always stuck with me i was like hmm, somebody told me that no, it does make sense yeah. i mean it's like you said uh keep it keep it the last step just because you know you don't want to clean your glass really good like you're saying on right. the inside for example and then use some kind of spray interior cleaner on the dash and right. then get over spray all over the glass you just or cleaned. you're going back all over the car and you're yeah. touching it and you're getting fingerprints you this that. that and the other so yeah. just do it last yep um and drying towel you know when you're that's another thing that i've always uh that we've always been asking we have a drying towel right now not even that we're trying to push it but it really is that good twisted yep. loop there twisted again, loop drying towel use that specific just for glass yeah, yeah it's it's a microfiber but the way that the microfiber is knit man it's crazy it's like a waffle yes the, it's uh, it, it's you can sit there and we've got the videos on there that you'll take that towel and you'll just drag it across the hood, and, and it totally dries that. I didn't believe it when we first got that. I didn't believe you wouldn't it. believe how many people they say how many towels did you use to dry that? And that was literally me and Jared. Uh, we had just got we had we were impressed with the towel, and we were filming, and oh. he did the whole, whole car. That's for real. And that is legit. And he did the whole car with that one towel. You never yeah. ring it out. Never ring it out. Nope. It is Drag absolutely it half the hood at a time. You I mean, can you guys can check out the video out yes, there. It really is impressive. Pretty it is solid. Impressive. How many people you you know come into the showroom like, where's that towel I saw that? You got to have. Yes, I mean, the, the old days of the chamois, the synthetic chamois, the natural chamois, all that. I mean, this thing, this is the whip. And uh, I mean, it's only it's four hundred and ninety nine dollars <laughs> for one. But it really is. I mean, it that's is, how nice. I'm, I remember how the whole what thing. What do we happened. sell those for? Like fifteen bucks, seventeen 15 yeah, bucks. Like I mean, that. you got to get seventeen. And it's the it's, it's the right. uh, it's it's the last you won't want to dry your car with any other towel. I remember when it Guaranteed. all when it all happened. Um, whoever they were wanting us to try it out, and a lot of people want us to try out different things to sell. Blah blah stuff, blah. Yeah. And it laid back there for a couple of weeks because mm -hmm. it doesn't look like it's something crazy. Mm. It's not particularly soft to feel. No. It doesn't no. feel. It's, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it, at it, all. It's awesome. It, and I I was I. Texted Jerry and I was like, "Where's that towel that they were all the that big gray about? towel?" Yeah, and we did it, and I went to drive my car, and literally took. I was like, "Man, this thing is crazy!" So if you that's get it, that's a good little tip. I mean, without did trying you just to really, say it's pretty push sick. It. I like it. <laughs> These kids, it's sick. It is. Man. You never heard that? Of course, I've heard. It. It's dope. You like yeah. that one? 
Yeah. You like that one better? It's titties. <laughs> That's a good one. We're not saying that, bro. <laughs> Said it. Nobody's saying I'm that saying one. I'm saying under 100. I mean, yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. So, um, first question. Our guy, Car Heaven Detail, Tim Pierce down in Western no, Kentucky. No, my guy. Tim Pierce, you got to tune into this. Tim, I know you're watching. Yeah. You guys... Watch this guy on Facebook. He's he awesome. Pretty, pretty he, cool videos. He does video. He every does day great almost. videos for Jack Swax. He pushes his our son. product. Yeah. Him and his boy in his garage. He's a great guy. He goes around, points out the Jack Swax products on his shelf, and he ends every video with, "And that's how we make them shine." <laughs> that's right. He, he's, yeah. He's, he's gotta love dude. the guy. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a good dude, and he's, he's and he's building his business in that area. And a ton he's of doing people, it right. He is doing it right because he's because he he's a genuine. Great job. People like him. Uh, I can't get enough of his videos. Yeah, I love, him. I, love him. I was just talking to him. I was just he's talking to him. And he's uh, paying his bill. I, was just, I really like him. I was just talking to him last night. Uh, we're doing a little giveaway with him uh, oh, yeah. for for his month of October. Well, he, yeah, yeah. You know, that's the guys we want to support. Yeah. He's enthusiastic. He, he, he gets uh, it. He, gets he does. It. I like so it. his question is, will you guys ever consider making an all-in-one compound, something that will polish and wax in the buffing process? Yeah. I mean, we're kind of on the... We're sort of there. It's, it's been on the back burner a little bit for us, but... Uh, I think we're close, and it, it's, you know, not not every uh, paint is the same. Manufacturers, there's different clear coats, and I would argue that there's not one pad polish or pad compound uh, combo that's just going to fix every every car that you you run across. So there's some that you have to get more aggressive with, and you got to use something like our perfect cut, finish it with like a final finish. We have a three step. Usually people are using two of those three steps depending on how bad the car is. Yeah. But there's cars that you could kind of one step. And I think that's where that comes into play, and, and uh, we're close on that. Right. And if um, if there's anyone that was some – our swirl remover sort, sort of a one-step? Sort of there. It just yeah. doesn't – it doesn't – what he's asking is it's something that's – Yes. Right. It doesn't have he, the protection. He wants to, he's calling it a one-step. He's right. And and uh, it's a great question. It, for a car that's not too bad where you got to do this three-step process, something that kind of – Kind of compounds it, a light compound. It buffs it, glazes it out to in a waxed finish. So there's yeah. going to have to be some carnauba in there. It's going to have to be some abrasive. Whether yeah. it's uh, uh, it's probably going to be a mild abrasive. But yeah, and, it, and it's again, it's not going to be for every car. But there's plenty of them out there. The paint's pretty good, and a yeah. product like that mm. is uh, yeah. is we'll definitely take care advantageous. Of it. Well, paints come so you know the old single stage paints were three, four mil thick. Your base coat clerk coat, that clerk coat is yeah, one and a half. It's, it's half as thick. So you can't get so aggressive with it. And some of them aren't bad, almost like our one, two, three step. You could use kind of the middle. Uh, but it's a great question. We're going to have a one step product. We're not going to just make a label say one step. Right. We're going to make gonna, a one step. We want to make the product right. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a need for it. Yep. Next question Quick C. Proper use of rinseless watch, which is a great product, but don't think some know how to use it properly. And when so that would be like the first part of the question. Mm -hmm. And when using detail spray, should I go in back and forth motions or circular, which I thought were two good questions. We yeah. get it, we get it all the time. Yeah. Wax on, wax off. Yeah, for so. the details, for the, for the, cir it, it's always been a myth that you go in circles when waxing or detail spray. It's not that it's wrong. It yeah. would just be that if you're, you, if you're in anything in your towel that has a, you know, dirt, a speck of dirt or something. And you're putting a, yeah you're putting swirl in it by going in mo in circular motions. You're putting more in. Right, and it if, would be easier to if remove. If you have something in your. Correct. That's, if you have a clean towel, applicator, mitt, whatever you're using, it doesn't matter what motion you go in. You're not you're not creating any problems. Right. It's when you get into what, what I think you're getting ready to say is when you do have dirt that's in an applicator or a towel or a mitt. Right. And you go in circular motions. It's hard. It's yeah. hard, yeah. It's, it's hard that whole to theme again of keeping it clean, a dedicated towel for glass a dedicated towel for your interior for your dressing for your wax it's just so to answer that question it's better to go in straight lines yeah instead of circular that way if you did introduce a scratch swirl you're it's easier to move a straight line than it is a swirl like if you're buffing it a right. straight line imperfection is easier to buff out than a circular I, i'll tell you who will hammer that home and is good at it is uh, our chicago guy jim eskridge yeah he'll show you yeah. And, yeah, and it does work. And mm -hmm. How many times has Jim shown that people in a car show? And he's right; it works. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's what was good. his first question? Rinseless first wash question application. Is wash. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, we had that formula for a very long time, and in, in, uh, in Columbus, Ohio, 
at least we thought it wasn't as relevant as it would be in California, for example, where they have water restrictions. Right. You know, we can wash our car whenever we want. There's a lot yeah. of places you can't just do that. Uh, so, one, it's a very concentrated product. If you watch our video on YouTube about rinseless wash, it pretty much spells it out. But in simple terms, you have two buckets. You've got what I consider your solution bucket with a grit guard in it, and you've got a clean water bucket, your rinse bucket, with also water. So if you've got a five-gallon bucket and you fill it with, let's say, three or four gallons of water, you put one ounce of rinseless wash per gallon, okay? It's, it's that concentrated. So that's in our solution bucket, and we take a towel. We have a towel that's what we call our rinseless wash towel, and you soak it in that bucket, and you wring it out. Let's say we're starting on our fender. You fold that in, in quarters, and you wipe in a straight line. You wipe that dirt off. And when you look at that dirt, you're going to see it. I mean, huge. Oh, yeah. when you look at that towel, you're going to see a big line of dirt. Right. Well, we don't use that same section of the towel. For the you, next part. For the next part, you flip it, and you keep flipping it. And let's say we're done with that fender, and we've cleaned it off. You then take the rinseless drying towel and dry it. Correct. And it really works. And then and once you, you do it like that, it works. It, it works yeah. really well. And then once you've saturated that towel, you take it back down in your rinse bucket, mm -hmm. rinse it all the way out, get all the dirt out of it. And then grit guard. And the, get all the crap off. Yep. And then put it back down in your solution and do the whole thing over and over. Another way, and another way that a lot of guys uh, here locally have really liked using rinseless washes, let's say you're going to a car show, you don't really have the use of a bucket, mm -hmm. um, the whole thing. They'll take an empty bottle and, you know, put just a little bit of rinseless wash in the bot in the bottom, fill it with water, make it real diluted, and then just spray it and like wipe. A, like a detail spray. Yep, like a yeah. detail spray. Yeah. So you spray and wipe. It. Yeah, it's another. So that's another good yeah, way. So like what you're saying is you're coming to a car show and and the car's not crazy dirty, but it's got some grime mm -hmm. from just driving the car show. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. that's another good way. And yep. we we rinseless wash ours a lot here um, in the winter when you don't want to get the bucket and if you keep your car fairly clean, if your car's super dirty. And it's mud. You need to, you need that, to just wash it. That's what needs to be pointed out, which is a really, really good point, is if your car is trashed out dirty, you need to wash it. Yeah. This yeah. is not for the car that's crazy dirty. Right. It, it can be pretty dirty, but this is for that in-between yeah. washes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a great product. Like, I, you know, I, I prefer to wash it. In the summertime, I'm using a foam cannon, and I'm washing my car. Definitely. In the wintertime, I'm not doing that because I don't have the access to do it. It's too cold. And I'm using them, for instance, wash right in our detail center mm -hmm. all the time. Yep. It's awesome. Love it. Yep. That guy, Rai Rai, he asked, when using a foam cannon, how much soap should you use to get the best foam without using too much? That's a good question. Five ounces. Five yeah. ounces. Yep. And we found that, five, you know, we say three to five. I think it's on the label, three to five, and we probably put that in videos. At five, you've got that shaving cream thick foam. Definitely. Which is what most people are kind of after. That's what makes it fun to use that yeah. cannon. And oh. to, so to answer that question properly, it would be fives about perfect yeah. but if you want more foam you can put more soap yeah there, I mean, uh, there's people that you know want that stuff to be so thick and oh yeah and you, really i mean it's starting to break down the grime and the dirt it's taking right. it with it as it as it falls off the car um they'll put more in there yeah. well i mean you watch youtube videos whether it's ours or someone else's product or our instagram when i do my rv because it's big and it, you know i can't spend all day on it i do Put a little more in there because it clings. You know, it'll stay on there, like Jared so said, like shaving cream. You're saying you would recommend 32 ounces. Well, I would per like <laughs> maybe a five gallon pail. <laughs> yeah. What, what we what he recommends uh, <laughs> is to take the top of your foam cannon and just stick it into the bottle of cannon. Listen, so listen, right. listen, these guys are always busting my balls. What I recommend <laughs> is that you wash my RV. <laughs> right. I'll that, pay that's, yeah. <laughs> and then I recommend that Todd does it. <laughs> right. And then I'm sure he's got somebody he'd recommend. Yes, yeah, I'll guy, recommend somebody. We'll get it done for you. I can, I can we'll get it done. You, I tell you. Before I, next year. You guys don't wait on that because it's right. not going to happen. Before next year, it'll happen. It, you, the, but on a serious note, when you have a really big vehicle, like an RV or sure. a big truck or whatever, mm -hmm. foam cannons make your life a whole lot easier. You've got to get a foam cannon. I mean, once you do it with a foam cannon, you're going to go, why did I ever do this the right. way I did it well, before? And so, also, if we're expecting people, we shouldn't expect it, that everyone knows what a foam cannon is. It's a... It's a detailing tool that you hooks up to a pressure washer so you have to have a pressure washer right. if you're talking about the foam cannons we're talking about and we do have one for a garden hose yeah right. foam yeah. gun it yeah. doesn't create as much foam but you can buy a, you can buy a uh, a pressure washer from us or you can go to your local home depot or lowe's get one you don't need the big expensive thing you don't and and i will say you know so we sell mtm um hydro foam cannons the best great company and i believe in their product they just they work well they did a um they added a feature to their foam cannons, which is probably worth mentioning. So many of these do-it-yourself guys are buying the Home Depot, the Lowe's, 
kind of like a low PSI electric pressure washer. And MTM added a low flow orifice that can, if, if that's the pressure washer you have, you stick that in the gun and it creates that same foam if you had like that 3000 PSI right. pressure washer you have. So I think it was a great addition because Definitely. so many people, that's what they're doing. If we, I, if at my house, I don't have, you know, I don't have a 3000 PSI pressure washer, some commercial right. grade stuff. Who has that? I mean, the, the and that, regular and guys that, doesn't have that. And that's a question we get all the time. What's, what's the standard? So another tip would be if you're, if you have a foam cannon, which for people that don't know, it goes on the end of your pressure washer, uh, nozzle. Yeah. And it's, Sprays foam. You've probably seen the it's videos. A quick disconnect. Just yep. clips on. So, what's the recommended PSI for the pressure washer? 1500. At least 1500. At least yeah. 1500. But if you get something like that, it'll work. And there's no more going into your bucket to have to get the soap onto your vehicle. You just spray it and just wash it down. It's yeah. a really, really good tool. So, that'd the be foam a good tip. The is the bomb. Yep. I yes, love them. They're awesome. Um, and if you don't have a if you want to go garden garden hose, we have that one too. Foam sure. gun, so right a ton of oh, the, for yeah, because a lot of people don't have pressure washers. I mean, you know, what right? I mean? So and right. all American made product, um, all stain, all the stainless rim, fittings, all yeah. the stainless fittings, mm-hmm. the the best. You for, know, you know, you can get a like a cheap molded plastic uh, foam gun that hooks up to a garden hose, and if you don't use it a lot, that's probably okay. Same but, way with the foam cannon. You know, you that's get, yeah. that's the that's there's a there's all this, and we're not saying that what's right and what's wrong but there's all these knockoffs of a foam cannon yep. and you see them 40 bucks wherever. or less yeah and, and and i will say if you're not using it much it's probably going to be okay right. for you right we just happen to sell to a lot of professional detailers and guys that wash their cars a lot and we want it to be something that's going to last and not somebody coming in here every you know coming to us like i've used it twice and it doesn't work or whatever and, and it's a poor reflection on us if we're exactly. selling a knockoff cheaper version that could be that person's first experience with us, and they could say, "Well, and it's I, not your products, our, mate. Your, do your products not work either? Right? You know, I, it's we, just not our deal. It's not. Well, our I just mean, want, we just professional want. mechanics don't buy forty piece socket sets for nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Right. That's it. So we want to offer the best, even when it comes to tools and stuff too. Yep. So that would be a tip that we would give. Yep. You know, buy when you if you pay more for the quality, it lasts longer. Get what you pay for. Okay. Next question is from. Paradox Z, this is a pretty good question. We'll we'll have a whole episode on ceramic coatings. Um, not the next one. I think we're going to do some film and tent tent stuff next episode. Mm-hmm. But we'll do a whole episode on ceramic coatings because we have that could be a whole episode. A ton of questions. Even most of the questions we got for this podcast were on for ceramic maybe, coatings because it is the number one asked about product we have, and it's and it's huge right now. But Paradox Z, um, he asked, "I'm using your guys' ceramic coating on my truck. I was wondering." If it's still okay to use Hawaiian Shine spray wax, or should I go ahead and get a ceramic detail spray that you guys released here recently? If so, why? Yeah, so can you, technically speaking, can you use Hawaiian Shine on a coated vehicle? Yes. Yes, but I'd recommend you don't. And the reason is, because before, before, we're going to go over this in the coating thing, so I won't get too in-depth, but I'll just make it I'll make it uh, right. as quick as I can. Coating's natural tendency is to shed whatever, that, whether that's water or anything that's not in there coating or silica sio2 whatever you want to call it family so when you put a carnauba based or organic product on top of that coating it's like eh, i don't like that and right to shed it so the so the carnauba based product waxes spray details that are carnauba based they don't perform the same so the beating characteristics are way different from just a coated vehicle correct so can it happen can you use it yes i would not recommend it for those reasons it's taken it's taken away your the stuff that people love about ceramic coatings. That's right. The shedding water. It, it's still on there and it works. Like even when we first were doing these, we had a guy yeah. came in and he was like, man, I, I've had it. I've had, uh, it's only been coated for like a month and I've lost the, the shedding. And we yeah. asked him, what have you, he's like, I've been putting carnauba wax and yeah, that was well, why. There you go. The carnauba, now it's back to a carnauba effect. Yep. And then once that, that washed off and that came off, it was back to ceramic coating. And that's the things we've learned over time. So, you know, mm-hmm. that's, that's you just so, learn them yeah. as you learn. I'd like to go. learn how to make this cable for these headphones a little longer so I can lay back. <laughs> you want to lay down? Well, next, no, maybe next get a lazy boy. <laughs> lay down. We'll continue. Yeah, just go ahead and lay down there in the You'll floor. Be all right, man, we got room. <laughs> go on uh, with your ceramic. What was the second? And, and should you use ceramic detailers? Is that what he's asking? Yeah, you should. Is there advantage to it? Yeah. So if you if you spent the time in the paint correction and you spent the time and the money in coating your vehicle. Just use anything that's in that family, which yeah. is ceramic detailer and shield shampoo, which is the soap. And it's not—it's not like it's a huge difference once you've already got the truck coated from buying right. 
you know the ceramic products to no. the to so the. It's not going to hurt it if you use Hawaiian shine, but keep it in the ceramic family. That's the hydrophobic. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. It's There's better for yeah. it. It's adding layers all the time. It's it's feeding that coating. So yeah, yeah for sure. So if you guys have um, any questions, more tips that you want to offer, check us out on our on the YouTube. If you're if you're just listening to it, check it out on YouTube. Drop some comments in. Um, I, I like the podcast from a YouTube standpoint, just because there's a lot of times, like right now, what people can't see, they're just listening to it, is that we have wash mitts and wash pads, yes, glass specific towels, grit guards, microfiber towels. We have all this stuff that you you wouldn't be able to see that if you're just listening to it. So if you've got the right. time and you can and you could subscribe to our YouTube, uh, mm-hmm. we have a, just a YouTube, yep, just a YouTube for, for the, the podcast, podcast. Jack's yeah. Wax podcast. Go check it out. Um, yep. And it's a uh, it, it allows you to interact. You know, you can yeah. post comments, we answer them. Yep. And if anyone, some things upcoming that we have going on this uh, weekend is local. Uh, you're going to a car show. Yeah, we'll be at uh, we'll be at the Colo Zoo show here in Columbus. Columbus oh, Zoo. That's huge. Yeah, they'll awesome be show. Last year there was 1,800 or so cars, and yeah. uh, you know you've you've gone there for years. We well, we were all there last I, year. I, you I had took a, a car last year, and I ended up me and a whole lot of people had to be out in the parking lot. It's, it, they've it, outgrown it's the just, zoo. Yeah, it's just grown so much. You yes. used to be able to park within the zoo. Well, now. They're, the expectation is even more cars, obviously. Oh, it's crazy! And now to and be it's in the parking cool. lot, it's cool. For, even for like bring your family, kids, you get to go to the zoo and check out an it's awesome not car just show. Just a car show. Well, right. there's people that are just going to the zoo that day and, and they don't realize there's a car show. Right. That's free. And if we'll do a little thing, anybody that uh, comes to that car show mentions this, and the the first person that comes up to the booth mentions the podcast from this episode, we'll give you a free show kit that we do there at the show. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, come and see us. And um, we'll we'll hook you up with that. And then we got some stuff coming up. We'll talk about in next episodes. We're going to be down in Atlanta, the twentieth, um, October twentieth. Southern yeah, that's Fresh, Southern Fresh, yeah. awesome show. The week before SEMA. Yeah, it's supposed to be really really good. And yeah. we've got our guy, uh, our distributor in Atlanta, Kevin Hawkins, is going to have a booth set up there. We're down yeah. there to support him. ATL Jacks Wax. He's, he's the guy. Yeah, he was up here like, uh, awesome two summers guy. ago. Yeah. You can't you can't good, beat a guy. Good like dude, that. awesome yeah. guy. Yep. So we're gonna yeah. go down there and help him. And uh, I I have the anticipation for that show is that it's gonna be really really. Can good. I ask you guys why you had to get first class tickets? I got the bill the other day. <laughs> Todd's but picky. You know why? That because Todd's you picky. were paying for him. <laughs> and you didn't let me use the jet. Like we had to fly commercial. <laughs> yeah, way to go. <laughs> I can't even get a cord long enough, <laughs> let alone for my jet. headphones. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah, hey, uh, we appreciate everybody that listens. Yep. Um, you have any? Give us suggestions. What we should do on podcasts? You know, we're new to this, and we uh, are open ears. So, um, any suggestions, questions, shoot them to us. Oh yeah, and we're having fun. I mean, that's yeah. I'm digging it. Yep, for sure. So go we appreciate everything. One oh, last here, thing. What are you gonna? Here we go. Well, we got to go do ahead. it. What are you gonna do? Did anybody check no. the Kentucky Wildcats? Oh, geez. game Listen, last week. Got, got an Oakland Raiders hat on. Look at this. Did you camera. see it? We <laughs> got an camera. Oakland Raiders oh, hat on, and they won. We beat the Browns. See. Here we go. <laughs> Who doesn't beat but, the Browns? But the Buckeyes had a good game also. I'm not a hater. You're not a hater. The Buckeyes had a good game. They did. They beat Penn State was probably the better game. wasn't the better game because the Cats played the same time. What was my prediction at the beginning of the season? I, I mean, lived there all my life. My prediction was if we can beat Penn State at home, we can go undefeated this year. Well, you know, you got to play them. That's why they make you play them. Well, it's, but it's, I'll tell you, I, 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 I'm not looking forward to it, but I know the day that the whole Kentucky thing, you stop bringing it up, is when they lose, which is coming up real soon. <laughs> Well, and then we're not talking about it anymore, well, you, are we? <laughs> then, then I will still talk about it because th- you guys don't understand. It. It's the first time in your life. Buckeyes are always a powerhouse yeah. in football. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> always a pot, always a powerhouse in football. This is we're five and oh, Ooh, we're the NAC national champs. It. It's a big deal. One it's more game, you're bowl eligible, and that's if that that's that all we shoot for is, every year, right? Just to get six wins, dude. I get it. We're in. It's a big deal, man. Yeah, I'm happy for you. I really am. <laughs> I'm not, neither am I. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening. Later, guys. Later. Later.